So in this video, I'm going to do an unboxing and a setup of a Firefly I recently got. Uh, I just got it today, actually. Uh, I decided to try to do an unboxing while I was on my lunch break at work. <laughs> it didn't go so great, but I'm still going to put that on here. Uh, and I'll do a, a setup video of that. What you can do without replacing parts and uh, just giving an overall initial setup with what you get out of the box on a Firefly. I'm going to use minimal tools. Um, I probably use my straight edge, my not straight edge. Um, and I'll probably just use some, like I said, very minimal tools. Um, just to show you what you can do when you get a, a Firefly. You want to set it up to play. All you'll need is a tuner. You'll need some steel wool, uh, some tape, and a screwdriver. And like I said, I'm going to use my, my straight edge to check my, um, my neck. But you can do that with a, a ruler, uh, a good yardstick, a metal yardstick would probably be fine. Just to check and make sure it's, it's sitting level where you want the fretboard. I happen to have the notch straight edge and I'm going to use it. Uh, but uh, that's what this video is going to be. I felt like I, I robbed you guys of a decent video. But you should still see the initial reaction from the dark brown Firefly. I really think they're a quality product for the $209. That's $209 shipped. A Les Paul style guitar that weighs 9 pounds. That has a mahogany back, mahogany neck, and a uh, flame maple top. The humbuckers that are in them sound pretty good. I mean, they're not the best humbuckers. If you put them up against uh, you know, something passive like, uh, we'll say the Seymour Duncan Hot Rod Set, which is something I prefer personally I think they sound great um, but anyways I just thought I would give you a little bit more uh, so obviously I'm uh, back in my car so I'm not going to do this right now but after the unboxing video um, stay tuned and we'll get you a little easy setup video all right thank you how we're doing we got another uh, guitar unboxing here today there we go. Um, I did get a third Firefly. Um, I know that I'm getting repetitive with that, and I promised to do something different. It's just, I was very happy with them. Um, so, I just felt like one more. Just one more. Unless they come out with that blueberry burst that's on their website. If they do that, ah, I'm going to get a fourth one. But I think I'm looking at a Harley Benton next. Um, and somebody told me about these mono price, so I'm going to probably look into that. But anyways, let's do it. Um, there's the box. There's the cutter. I have not seen this yet. We're going to do it together here. I expect the packaging to be the same as last time. And if you've seen any of the unboxing before that I've done, um, these are pretty well packed, um, so this time I got the dark brown, so they always give you this, this time it's a little different because they give you the pick guard in here. They always give you the switch tip and a cord and an Allen key in here. There's the switch tip. It's always hard to get to. But I'll have to put this on later. But we're going to take a look at the guitar now. So I always talk about the boxing I don't think I show that very well but this thing's very solid box um, it's better box than some of my higher end guitars that I get um, it says DB for dark brown on top I went with the dark brown this time um, 
with the fireflies it's been one of those things that you buy them when you see them and I already had the other colors that they had out in the dark brown I, I really want a good sunburst one but this was close to the classic colors I could get I again try to save these every time just in case I have to ship a guitar which I have a couple up for sale so I might be shipping out one if I can get this off orange it's got an orange tint to it I am most definitely putting that pit guard on see I'm a I like a Les Paul with a pit guard. But the flame on this is not bad at all. Hard to get that flame in this light. So, yeah, and again, initial reaction on this is it's very solid, very heavy. Again, I'm thinking eight, nine, nine nine pounds even um, they don't they don't come out of the box completely set up right job feels pretty good not bad at all Anyways, there she is. Unboxing Firefly Dark Brown. So, uh, to begin that, I'm going to take off the plastic shielding here. That's a scratch protector. And this thing wasn't cut exactly great. Uh, that's going to be the best way I can say that. I'm going to take my knife and I'm just going to scrape it. Um, that's going to smooth it out. Get a little more even feeling. Um, don't be afraid to do this. It's not that big of a deal. It was cut pretty, pretty lousy. You see all this that's coming off. You could really feel that. So yeah. Right there, just that little bit of time is a lot better, but it's still not right. You can still see all this gunk. You don't want that off there. Yeah, new guitar, you want it to feel right. Uh, scraping the pick guard, scraping binding. Uh, sometimes these cheap guitars, that's gonna be something that you might have to do. Don't, don't be afraid. You're not going to hurt it. That's something you want to do first. Um, just make sure 
and it is off that guitar and then you've got it where you want it before you put it on just keep filling it you'll feel where it's not right And as I say in every video I do, this may not be the correct process. This is just how I do it. There's a big rough spot right in here. I'm trying to even it out. Without making my life super complicated. feels a lot better. Take down just a little bit more. Yeah, that's pretty good. You can do that with sandpaper or whatever, but I just find scraping it does, does the job. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and install this piece here. Now on this one, it feels like, and I, it is, that this hole isn't big enough for the nut, or the bolt, I'm sorry, to go in. So I'm going to have to ream out that bolt. So let's get going on that. So I happen to have this little T-reamer that uh, I got at Harbor Freight. Uh, it's really good for doing tuning keys or pots uh, if you're changing from a dime pot to a CTS or something there sometimes those are too small and you have to ream out the hole. I'm just going to use that instead of a drill bit because I trust it. Um, so let's ream out the hole front and then I'll ream it out in the back. It's going to be a lot easier than changing out my drill bit and all that fun stuff. Just ream it out. Yeah, and now it fits. Um, fits pretty well. I'm going to add this. I'm going to loosely put this on. I don't want it to be super tight. I do want it to not like move around like crazy, but the um, reason I don't want it super tight is so I can move it where I want it so I can mark my holes. So here we go, put it there. I'll we'll put that where I want it. I think I want it just like that. Let's make sure we're down. And then I'll take, uh, sometimes I'll take uh, an, an awl, or even this thing works pretty good. This is part of an um, electric circuit tester. Actually, I'll just do that right now, I'll show you. Um, i start putting pressure. Kind of just poke the hole. And then we drill. Just making a small drill hole. So I'll screw that down, make sure I got the right size screwdriver. Yep. Now some people wouldn't want that on there, the pick guard, you don't want to, you think you uh, like it without it, don't do this. But I like the Les Paul with the pick guard. Just a personal preference.
and I will tighten that uh, little bolt up in just a second. So after I tighten that up, we've installed the pick guard. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of these strings. We're gonna go into the next little project here and in the initial setup, minimal tools. I use this little thing to poke the holes before I drilled it. Um, that was to try to stop me from breaking out the uh, breaking the finish at all. So I'm going to remove the strings and we're going to go on to the next. Now for removing strings, I use this guy. It makes quick work of it. So I'm going to remove them and we'll move on. show you what I mean by making quick work of it. I'm sure you've all uh, removed strings. And those are my shipping boxes from the last three guitars that I got. I've got one getting ready, well, getting ready to come out and go out. So. Um, yeah, so I'm going to remove them and we'll go on to the next. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else, I'm going to do the mechanical pencil thing. This is a cheap blade. Typically, I'll do this tusk nut. Uh, if you saw my unboxing on my green one there, the green firefly, I'm going to put this on there and I'm going to put on some go-to tuners. Um, found a good deal on go-to. 30 bucks. But anyways, so you want to put graphite here in the nut slots. That's something you want to do if you're not going to change the nut. It really helps with tuning stability. Now as I'm doing this, I feel this nut needs cleaned out a little bit I don't have great nut files I have this little thing I got on wish um, and I wish that I would have bought the high dollar ones instead of this thing but I didn't so we're just gonna clean that file clean that out graphite and you get a size bigger if you hear whining that's my dog going in here apologies there's just gunk in this slot. I'm just doing that to get it out. So anyways, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to put some more graphite down. And that will let the string slip better. And it feels much better right now. Now this is going to just color your nut. Um, some people can't deal with that but if you want to keep all your components that came with this guitar you want to put graphite in that nut um, or change the nut this you don't have to do the pencil trick um, it's a much better nut like I said I will be installing one on these I will change the tuning keys on these on this but for today's setup, I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm just going to set it up how it is with minimal tools. So let's move on to the frets. When I was thinking about it, I feel like I should probably go ahead and take the plastics off the pickups real quick before I start on the frets. So let's just remove that stuff. Um, I said I haven't touched this guitar at all. I was waiting to do the video with you guys. So... There goes the plastic. Frets on this actually feel really good. I mean, really good. Sorry, I was getting a phone call on that. Um, so I'm not gonna do a full blown, but I am gonna shine them up. 
Um, now, typically I use my Dremel for today's video because I want to do this as minimally uh, minimal tools as possible. I'm just going to use some steel wool. I'm going to use triple zero steel wool. Um, this will be all you need. Uh, one pack of this lasts you absolutely forever. I use this stuff for a lot of things with guitars. But if you're doing steel wool um, as um, what you're cleaning with, I suggest you cover your pickup, at least your top one. Otherwise, you're going to have little steel wool dust all over your magnet. So, that's first. Now, I have these things. Um, if you don't have these things, it's not a big deal. Just take some tape. Put around each side of this. Do one fret at a time. Uh, you could do more, but take you a little bit of the steel wool. You don't have to use a whole pad. I mean, literally a pinch of it will do this job. Just rock back and forth. Shine it up. Clean up the gunk from the manufacturer. I mean, if these frets had a bunch of file marks in them or tooling marks, I would sand them down through all the different grits and the polishing cloths that I normally use. I don't know if you guys have seen any of the videos, but I use these micro mesh pads I get from Amazon, and they do a great job, and then I use my Dremel and polish them. But, again, for minimal tools, and these don't, these don't have a lot of file marks on them, so I think this will be fine. So you just take and do that, and that one's going to be shined up. Move your tape, go to the next, and keep going all the way down. Let's do that. So I'm still working on this. Um, it does take a few minutes to get through the whole thing. Uh, I'm just showing you how I'm moving my tape. Um, and not wasting a bunch of material. I mean, my tape's pretty much cheap, and I use the cheapest stuff there is. Um, don't get high tack tape though is the only thing and if you do rub it on your pants before you use it but uh, just down to the last couple few <coughs> figured I'd show that process and this is just to clean it up get it back to high high gloss when they do these in the factories this is done in the Chinese factory um, and they're pumping out these guitars. I mean, it's not like, you know, a Gibson factor where they actually look at each fret and care. Um, you know, they get gunked up. So just a little bit of polish will make your bending and stuff like that um, really feel so much smoother. You can see all this little dust. <coughs> That's why you cover that up. Because all that metal will get on your pickups. If you don't. So this is the last one. There you go. <coughs> That's all there is to that. So I keep this. This isn't bad. Uh, i use it for another guitar. I'll take this off. Yeah, let me brush it off a little bit first. I'll even use this stuff to make sure it doesn't get on my pickups before I... Hard to get it off your pickups once you get it on your pickups. I'll tell you that. Okay. Having done that, I'm going to clean the fretboard now. Hydrate it more than clean it. But it's kind of both steps in one. And I use lemon oil. And uh, I just use old English lemon oil. Plain old lemon oil. I know um, Duncan uh, sells some that are guitar formulated. 
Uh, I think that's a bunch of hogwash. That's just me. Well, as I was cleaning that, I felt a couple of grabbies. And there, there are some. Right here, I feel it. Right there, I feel it. Now, I said I was going to do this with minimal tools. Um, I said I would try to do it with minimal tools. A fret guru file. Um, if you get a sticking out fret, this thing will shave it down. If you get some of these grabbies that don't feel comfortable, this thing's the way to go. Um, I can knock those off real quick. This one's the worst right here. So it's got a smooth side. And I just kind of run it back and forth. And then I'll round it over until I feel that being pretty much gone. Actually, I'm going to take this one just up a little bit. Now there's an art to this. I don't profess to be the best at it in the world. It's rounding over frets and you can be really good at it. I just try to take my time and feel the whole time. That's better. Um, there's not anything that super needs addressed, maybe down in here. Uh, this is something that can take you all day. And uh, is it worth it? Absolutely. You go through and get your frets feeling perfect down there. Um, most times you don't have to do it again if you keep it in a decently uh, controlled room for humidity and temperature. Anyways, so my fretboard's clean. My frets are polished. I'm going to check the um, straightness of the board. So I have a not straight edge. Make sure that's the right one. Yeah, it is. Um, we're going to go the 24 and uh, 3 quarter because that's a typical Gibson scale length. <clears throat> and what I'll do is I'll put that on there and read the fretboard. Um, and if there's no light between the the, the board and the straight edge we're good to go but I can feel there's a little bit here I'm just looking at it well no not really check in a couple different places It's got a little bit of a relief in it. And you do not want these things sitting perfectly straight. You want a little bit of relief. Um, not much, but a little bit. So, having said that, I think this is set fine. I'm going to check the frets. This is a fret rocker. Um, this is a $10 piece. That piece that I just got there. Uh, it was about a $20 piece on Amazon. This is about a $10 piece on Amazon. Uh, I suggest those. Um, if you're going to have a couple guitars and you're going to set up your own guitars, these are things you want to have. Uh, so basically you stretch three frets and you try to rock it. If you hear clicking, you have a high fret. I check it in three points. And it's got these different angles so that I got a little bit of a high spot right there. That This fret's high. Right there. It's not down here. Just right here. Which, first, if that happens, if it's just in this spot, I look to see if the fret is seated right. Um, 
so I have a high spot just right there all right and it is that one fret so you check the whole length three spots is fine some people some people take it and do this kind of thing with it and that's for like you're harming the uh, polish you just did I got a little bit of wiggle right there hear it that means this spot in that frets high Typically, these are going to be the high frets. So I have two small spots. It's not enough for me to do a full level and crown. Um, so I'm just not going to worry about it. I don't think it's going to make any difference. The fretboard's sitting pretty flat. And I've only got a spot here and here. And it's very minuscule. So I'm just going to move on. I'm going to string it. I'm going to make sure everything's tight. Let me go through that with you. What do I mean? I'm going to make sure everything's tight. Um, sometimes these things are pretty loose everywhere. I'm going to fill check it. Make sure I don't need to tighten anything. Make sure the buttons are right. Um, I'll fill around on this stuff. Down, down the tone pots. Uh, Make sure everything's good and situated. So now we got our fretboard clean. We checked it. Everything's tight. Everything's working fine. Um, give it another blow off. I'm going to go ahead and string it. For this one, let me move you a little bit. I am going to go Diadario 10s. I thought I had an open box of these. Oh, I do right here. This is the open box. Much cheaper to buy them in a 10 pack. Um, anyways, Deodaro 10s. We're going to restring it. How I do it. <coughs> Deodaro winds them up in twos. unwind them and twos. I like to go ahead and start with the heavier gauge string first. That's just me. So I string them all one time. That way I'm not playing with it all day. And you gotta watch doing that too because sometimes it'll make a big knots. This is just how I do it. Everybody has their own way of stringing. Everybody has their own way of taking care of the guitars. I mean, this is just what I do, how I do when I get a new one. And this one, like I said, being a $220 guitar, Typically, I will replace um, the nut, and I'll replace the tuning keys, and I will take the electronics out, and I will shield it with copper tape or paint, um, because I never really trust a cheap guitar to have that stuff done right. So let's move you again. Sorry for this. I, I know I'm not the best at camera work. This is not about being the best camera work. This is about showing you what to do when you get a $200 guitar and you get it home. Hopefully that someone helps someone. 
So we don't want too many wraps on the uh, big string. Kind of get a little bit of slack and just start it. Try to make sure that uh, first wind will go under. to the next so on and so forth okay they're all on there we'll go through and clip these things off I don't clip them right off I go just above the tuning peg I don't go all the way down in case there is some kind of slippage there shouldn't be but in case so I did a couple windings Those clippings better go in the trash can, and they better go in the trash can right. You better make sure you have all six of them, or they're going to go in your foot. <laughs> Anyways, so she is strung up. Now, I will take and see how the nuts cut. Make sure I got a little room there by the third string and see what the first string, how much room you have on the first string. This one's a little... I do that before I start messing with anything um, and that's in case I have to cut on the nut next thing I'll do just put more tension on these strings real quick check the pickup height this one's a little low so it's this one but I'm a little high on the action you can go down with strings on it you don't want to go up with tension on it um, so if your action's sitting a little low and you want to raise it take tension off your strings if you're going to lower it you can do that without taking tension off but I don't have enough um, tension on it to really worry about it. That's about where I want my action. I just, you know, just a little bit. And I can eyeball it. You can do it with an actual gauge. Um, I'm going to raise this pickup up. It's pretty low on this side. You just want it to be about where the fret's sitting. The uh, poles here. Hey, they got gave me a dented cap here. Raise this one up. This is the pickup I use the most. Um, I use this in solos. And there's an actual measurement on that. I think it's four millimeters. And if you have a pair of these. You want to use that and get the recommended pickup height. Same thing with the nut. Um, you can get that um, with this part. How tall that string setting, which I will probably do, but for today's purposes, that's about where we want to be. Now, I'm going to move on to intonation. I gotta put my screwdrivers back. And I need a smaller screwdriver flathead. So, proper screwdriver for the job always. And one thing I'm horrible about is putting my tools back where they belong. Some people are awesome at it. I am not that guy, I just, live with the messy pool station anyways so let me get my cord here and I'll move you in just a second maybe and I'll plug in here plug into my tuner 
Turn the tuner on. Let's move you. Okay, we're going to work on intonation. First thing I want to do, tune it. Now, as I put tension on this thing, it's going to detune, and the strings will naturally detune. got a ways to go. This is where you find out about your tuning keys. How they feel, and honestly these don't feel bad. When I'm pulling on the string like that, trying to get the, the string to relax on the nut there. So I'm going to do this one at a time. <coughs> I'm fretting the 12th. You want to do that very lightly. When you're fretting it down, you, you got to watch your pressures. Um, too much pressure, you're making the note sharp. That's why it's important to do the harmonic as well. So they've set this up. This is set. Um, basically, though, if your note's sharp, you move it. If it's flat, you move it. Um, and it's just little adjustments, and you, you don't want to move it very far. You move it, you tune it, you move it again, you tune it until it's sitting straight. Um, so I'm really happy that they had this already set for me. That's very nice. The action is pretty good. I'm in tune. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check all my channels and go from there. We'll keep going. So I got it in D right now um, just to make sure everything's working properly. I'm at the uh, bridge pickup right now. Um, I don't know how loud this is going to be. The um, amp's right behind you. So. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's just go ahead and turn down the volume here. Okay. 
checking for anything noisy. back up but then both pickups She's working. I don't hear any. There's some disturbance. Hear it? This spot. Not grounded right. Yep. We got a grounding issue. We'll have to break into that and take a look at it, but grounding issue aside, which is pretty easy fix, I'm gonna have to go into the cavity and see where the grounding wire goes to this pot um, and make sure it's making good contact. I'm not getting any bad noise out of the switch, out of any of the other pots. Well, I'll take my hand off. Just this one. And it's when it's turned off. So there's a grounding issue. Shouldn't be too bad though. Anyways, um, that would be the setup of this guitar. This is the Firefly. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and fix that grounding issue real quick. And she should be done. That's the initial setup of this guitar.